Hi, I'm Scott Willison, owner of the Confluence Fly Shop, and today we're going to tie a Pacific Northwest uh, favorite that has been around for for quite some time. This is Mike Kinney's uh, Reverse Spider. Uh, this is perhaps my my favorite sea run cutthroat fly of of all time. Uh, it's been around for a number of years. It's really kind of unique to to the Pacific Northwest, and uh, this works like gangbusters on sea run cutthroat. Uh, so in my vise, I have a size 8 Daiichi 1270. And I usually tie this fly uh, as big as a 6, as small as a 10. Um, but it, uh, 8's kind of right in the middle, so kind of a good place to start. Uh, we are going to begin our thread which in this case is a uh, yellow 140 denier ultra thread. And this fly is kind of funny in that it actually gets tied a little backwards. So we're, I, I like to start with the hackle. Uh, we're going to use just a natural mallard fe flank feather. And I'm going to strip away some of the excess fluffy stuff that I, I don't need at the end. the base of the feather there and then I want to comb back the fiber so I can uh, expose the the tip like so um, I'm actually going to cut that tip off when I get started now really important we actually want this hackle to flow forward over the hook eye uh, rather than the traditional style with the hackle sweeping backwards uh, uh, over, over the fly. That's going to make the fly uh, really stand out and pulsate in the water, which seems to drive the, the cutthroat mad. So I'm going to cut this tip off, and when I tie the feather in, I'm actually going to tie it facing forward over the, over the eye, so butt end of the feather, or the base of the feather facing out over the eye, with the, the concave side of the feather curving down and that's going to ensure that when I wrap this feather everything's going to face forward. So I'm going to cut that tip off but uh, I'm going to I'm going to try not to misplace it because I'm actually going to just use that tip for a tail a little further down the road so we'll get that in Make sure we've got that secured right up against the hook eye. And I'll go about an, uh, the equivalent of a, a hook eye's width behind the, the eye there to position my thread. So I'm actually going to kind of train those fibers facing forward out over the hook. And we're actually going to wrap this backwards. So one wrap after the next, working toward the rear of the hook. I like to get about three or four wraps in there. And then we'll tie that off. get rid of any of the excess stuff that we we don't need here so that's about right fairly fairly full but not not too dense you really want to get good movement out of this fly when you're fishing it um, we'll go ahead and wrap back over that and go to we're about even with the hook point and then if you didn't lose that that little tip section that you cut off. We're going to take that and put that in for our tail. And We've got all the moving parts on our fly. Now we're going to do our body. Uh, now Mike 
did a couple things differently on this fly. Uh, when, when he originally tied it, uh, he used a, a chenille body, and he also used natural Lady Amherst uh, pheasant uh, crest feathers, which uh, are uh, from, from the neck. Uh, nice, beautiful, soft, barred feather, uh, which works very, very well. Um, those have been harder to come by these days. Um, Mallard works fantastic too, so we're going to tie that version. And then um, for the body, we're going to use uh, trilobal dubbing in the uh, hot yellow color, or just the yellow color. Um, I really like dub bodies on these. I just think they, they look a little bit nicer. Um, yellow is usually my number one color. Uh, Black is a good color. Orange is very good. Um, white and uh, even pink can be very good at times. So I'm just going to twist that on. And this is kind of a coarser dubbing, so don't be afraid to use dubbing wax or a or little, little bit of water to wet your hands to, to help get that to better adhere to the thread. And we're going we're gonna to kind of try to taper this body up here. So we're getting a little bigger as we get toward the front of the fly. And having, having a little bit more bulk up front is also going to help support this uh, mallard. So it doesn't completely collapse back. I've got a little extra dubbing I'm just going to pull off there so I can I can finish finish this neatly all right and, and there we are essentially done with the with the spider um, gonna go ahead and whip finish behind the the hackle here and I want to make sure I don't compress that hackle too too much I want to get right behind it Go ahead and tighten that up. I could do another whip finish if I wanted to for durability, but uh, it, generally I'm, I'm good with uh, three or four turns of a whip finish. I don't tend to use head cement or uh, or any kind of finishing glue on this fly. Uh, the The problem is if it gets into your mallard flank or whatever feather you're using on the front of it. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of the mobility of the fly. And when this thing's in the water, these fibers facing forward and resisting the current are going to gently pulsate back and really have a lot of lively action in the water. Uh, you could also weight this fly either with uh, lead-free wire or with a bead. Um, I generally prefer this unweighted. Uh, oftentimes just fish a, a foot or so below the surface on a floating line, this thing can be absolutely deadly. Uh, you could also use a, a mini sink tip or a poly leader if you, if you feel the need to get it down. But uh, this is definitely a fly worth having in your sea run cutthroat box uh, this, this fall. Um, it was proven on the Stillaguamish, it works on the Skagit, it, it, it works wherever you've got sea run cutthroat returning to the rivers in uh, September and October. So be sure to tie a few, or, or you can also purchase these at the, the Confluence as well. We've got some tied up already. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching, and please be sure to pick up the materials for this fly and many others at the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. While you're at it, you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks, and we will see you on the water.